What's up guys, welcome back. Father's Day is here and what better way to celebrate than with this beautiful tomahawk ribeye with compound butter and a loaded seafood baked potato. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell, enable notifications as well. All right, first things first, we're outside with the big green egg. I'm loading it up with some lump charcoal and we'll get our fire started. We're looking for about 450 to 500 degrees on our grill or high if you're cooking it on a skillet in the house. While we're waiting for our grill to come up to temperature, we're gonna start on our potatoes. We have two large rusted potatoes that we're gonna clean and dry thoroughly as you see me doing right here. You can do this in a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour, or you can pop them in the microwave for about eight to 10 minutes, whatever works best for you. Today we're doing them in the oven though. You do wanna make some punctures like you see me doing right here with either a fork or a knife that allows the steam to escape from the potato and ensures that they don't blow up in your microwave or your oven. Next, we're gonna rub them down with a little olive oil. That's gonna help the skin get nice and crispy. Pop those potatoes in the oven for about 45 minutes and we're gonna work on our compound butter now. So I have one stick of Kerrygold butter, which is a high quality grass fed butter, but use whatever you got. You do want it to be room temperature, that way it's easy to work with. And these are the ingredients we're gonna add for our compound butter. We got some fresh herbs, some lemon, some garlic, some all purpose seasoning. So here we're gonna work on our thyme. Remove the thyme leaves from the stem like you see me doing here. Do the same thing with the rosemary and then we're gonna give that a nice rough chop. We're using about two tablespoons or so of fresh herbs and then about two tablespoons of fresh parsley as well. Again, just give that a rough chop. No right or wrong way to do this, but you do want it to be nice and small. That way you get even spread throughout the compound butter. As always guys, specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. We're gonna use three cloves of fresh garlic as well. You can use minced garlic, but I think fresh is best for this recipe. As you can see here, the butter is nice and soft. We're gonna add a little all-purpose seasoning. You can pick yours up via the link in the description box below. It's a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder for those of you that wanna use what you got in your pantry, no big deal. We're gonna grate that fresh garlic into the butter and we're gonna add some lemon zest as well for a pop of freshness. Tons of flavor in this compound butter, guys. If you haven't made this before, definitely give this a try. It's fantastic on steaks, chicken, it's good in pasta, it's good on potatoes, your significant other. No, really, guys, it's good on everything. Next, we're gonna break out the saran wrap because we're gonna roll this butter up tightly and then we're gonna place that in the refrigerator to chill. If you're pressed for time, you can pop it in the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes to make sure the butter gets nice and firm. There we go. Now we're just gonna roll it up just like you would a, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Here you just wanna roll it tightly and then we're gonna seal the sides by tying them up. And then we're gonna again place that in the refrigerator or the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. There we go, looking good. And there you have some compound butter, guys. You can throw that in just about any recipe to kick the flavor up a notch. And now we're moving on to the star of the show, this beautiful tomahawk ribeye. This is a prime grade ribeye we got from Wegmans. We're gonna hit it with the all-purpose seasoning. Give it a nice thick layer. This is a two and a half pound piece of meat, guys, so make sure you season it like so. Always spread your season evenly, press down firmly with your hand, that way the seasoning stays intact. You get a nice crust on there. And this is the perfect blend for a steak, guys. Salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, a little cayenne, something like that. Our potatoes are just about done. We're gonna wrap them in foil, but not before we hit them with some nice flaky kosher salt, because if you're anything like me, you love eating the potato skin and that olive oil and salt mixture just makes them super delicious. So we're gonna wrap them up in foil. That's gonna allow them to stay nice and warm until we need them here in a few minutes and really allow the salt to coat the outside of the potato. Next, we're moving on to the filling for the potatoes. We're gonna heat a skillet over medium heat, season our shrimp with Cajun seasoning, and then sear them for about 60 to 90 seconds per side. And then remove those shrimp once they're cooked through. Shrimp is done once it hits 145 degrees internal temperature. Add two to three tablespoons of good quality butter to your skillet. And then we're also gonna add a teaspoon of roasted garlic better than bouillon base. This stuff is packed with flavor, but it does have a lot of sodium in it, guys. So just keep that in mind so you don't over-season your sauce. 
Next, we're gonna make a roux by adding one to two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And you wanna cook that off for a minute or two, and then we're going in with a fourth cup of dry white wine, something like a Chardonnay. That's optional, guys. If you don't wanna add the wine, you can just go in with a little bit of chicken stock. Next, we're going in with two cups of half and half. And you wanna bring that up to a boil, whisking constantly. Once it reaches a boil, we're gonna reduce it down to a simmer. And then we're gonna start adding in some Parmesan cheese. We haven't added much seasoning here, guys, because that better than bouillon base has a lot of sodium and Parmesan cheese has a lot of sodium as well. So really no need to go too crazy on this on the seasoning. You wanna taste it as you go and adjust the seasoning to your preference. All the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below. As you can see, our sauce is thickened up beautifully, going in with a little fresh lemon juice. That acid really cuts through the creaminess of this sauce, makes it super well balanced. And now we're going in with four ounces of lump crab meat. We're going big today, guys, because it's Father's Day and we want to make sure that the man of the house is well taken care of. Once you've tasted your sauce for seasoning, you can go ahead and add more if it's needed. I'm adding a little bit of Cajun seasoning here. As always, guys, taste as you go and adjust the seasoning to your preference. Now that our sauce is done and our grill is up to temperature, it is time to cook this beautiful steak. Again, you're looking for about 450 to 500 degrees on your grill. You can do this on a gas grill or a charcoal grill, or you can go ahead and sear it inside on your cast iron skillet. Looking for about four to five minutes per side, depending on how thick your steak is. I like mine about medium rare. So I'm looking for about 135 degrees internal temperature. After a couple minutes, we'll give it a twist to ensure it's cooking evenly. Make sure we don't have any hot spots on the grill. Brace yourself for a quick little money shot. Oh my goodness, look at that steak. Nothing beats a steak on the grill, guys, over charcoal. Oh my God, that looks good. Beautiful crust. While we're waiting for the steak to finish, we're gonna go ahead and prep our potatoes. So we're gonna unwrap them from that foil, make a slice right down the middle, then push on both ends like you see me doing right here. That's gonna help the potato pop open, making for a perfect baked potato. But guys, it's Father's Day, so we can't go with a basic baked potato. We're gonna scoop out some of the inside of the potato and make like a twice baked potato situation that's gonna be loaded with that seafood sauce that we made. It's gonna be fantastic. The man of the house is gonna be very happy. Add the potato mixture to a mixing bowl. We're gonna add a little bit of boars and cheese along with a little half and half. And just get in there and mash those potatoes together. Basically like a quick little mashed potato. And then we're gonna refill those potato skins. Again guys, specific measurements and ingredients are in the description box below. And look at this steak. Quick pro tip guys, you always wanna allow your steak to rest for a few minutes before you slice it. Anything from five to 10 minutes is perfect. Perfect time for us to add that compound butter, which is good on everything, especially on this steak. That butter is gonna melt beautifully, add tons of flavor to the ribeye. If that's not food porn, I don't know what is. Here's a little bit more too. We're gonna to add that seafood sauce that we made right into that potato. We're gonna add those shrimp that we cooked earlier. Load it up too, don't be shy. Some crumbled bacon as well. Oh man, if this doesn't make you hungry, I don't know what to tell you. A little green onion for a pop of color. And that, my friends, is a platter made for Father's Day. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Nothing left to do but give this a taste test. That's what it's looking like after it's been sliced. Perfectly cooked steak. Let's see what we got. Oh my goodness, that's good. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. You know I got to get in there and try that potato also. Oh man, that might be the star of the show. This recipe is fantastic, guys. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.